All right, today we're going to recap Season 2, Episode 2, Portrait Artist of the Year. Let's get started. All right, the first model is Ronnie Ancona. She is an actress, a comedy actress, from best known from her role Last Tango in Halifax, which you can find on BritBox or on Acorn. As I said, it's a British program. And now we're going to look at the setup that they had for her. There are three models. Each one gets a separate setup and four people are painting each one of these separate models. So there are 12 contestants painting. Three models, 12 contestants. They put her, I guess because she's an actress, they put her surrounded by costumes and a costume box. So that seems somewhat appropriate. And we'll see how the, the participants or contestants deal with the, with the complexity of that. The next model is Baroness Elena Kennedy, who is a distinguished lawyer. They set her up in a setting with a table. I think it has maybe some tea and a teacup and that sort of cloudy background. I, I don't know if they gave a reason for that or not. I think they wanted her in a less formal setting than what she's known for. I guess being a lawyer, she must be dealing in courtrooms quite a bit. That would be my guess. Anyway, that's the job of the art judges to set up these different vignettes. The next one is well-known, Lord Julian Fellows. He's known for writing Downton Abbey. And now that I think of it, they gave him a gray background. They didn't really do much with him. Anyway, I don't know the explanation for that, but that's their choosing. Love the pink suit, though, don't you? Takes a gutsy man to wear a pink suit. Anyway, there's the setting and you get a perspective from what the artist would actually see. You can see the lighting and just how distant they are from the actual models. All right, so here's a screenshot of Ronnie in case you want to paint along. I'm going to paint my own version, but I'm going to do the Baroness for mine. And now let's look at the final contestants. So here's number one. I really enjoy the background of this and the lost and found edges I would not say that there's a likeness. There's a lightness. I appreciate that. Uh, it does look somewhat like a watercolor, but unless I say it's a watercolor, there virtually are no watercolorists in this program. It's very, very rare. So this is either acrylic or oil. I don't know. But that is her entry. And she gets to choose one of the four entries that she can take home with her if she, want, if she wants to. So here is the second one. I like how the person simplified the background. I think if there had been a lot of pattern and texture in the background along with that very strong face, it would have lessened the impact. So I'm glad that the person decided to simplify the composition. It certainly is a direct gaze from the model. And I think there's a likeness there. So I think that was well done for a portrait. The next one I couldn't get a picture of all by itself, although we'll see it closer up later. Here's a screenshot. So you can see the one I just saw you on the left. The one on the right is uh, the one that she chooses to take home with her. It has some sort of strange technique where the artist overlays paper on top of paper. So when you get up close to it, it looks as if the face is scarred. It has actual creases going through the face. I don't know what that's about. I found it disturbing, but there's certainly a likeness. So this is the one that Ronnie chose to take home with her, and we'll see if that becomes a finalist or not. Now here's number four from this particular model, and I, I don't see a likeness here at all. Um, all right, the next model, if you want to get a screenshot, this is Baroness Elena Kennedy. And now let's look at the people that painted her. The one on the left is, I think there's a likeness there. I do wish they had put in a background of some kind, but they didn't. Um, you know, uh, they do have four hours. I think that's plenty of time to co complete a painting. Um, but what do I know? I, it must be so nerve wracking to be in this sort of situation. The one on the right looks quite a bit more painterly to me. You can see brush strokes. You can see a quality going on there that looks 
uh, like there might be some pretty good substitutions for color value swap outs. We're going to be able to look at that a little bit closer uh, later. So let's just hold on to that for a minute. But I wanted you to get a sense of the sizes and, once again, the setup. So those are two participants for Baroness Elena Kennedy. Remember, there are four people painting her. Here is the third one. This one is just doesn't do much for me. I don't get a light source. Everything looks quite um, gray, gray, gray and grayed down. The next one is, I'm just going to put in the category of weird. It's not a painting, really. I think what it is is a charcoal drawing. Yeah, it's a charcoal drawing. I'm not certain of that. And in this case, they took the background of those clouds and put them in with her face, and you get this kind of weird floaty thing going on, which is very artistic, but uh, doesn't speak to me as a painter. I, so I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. But uh, but she painted the feature. Uh, she drew the features quite well. I'm missing the structure of the face. I want something to anchor in that face. I like anchoring in. Here's the painting that I like the best from this particular heat, and this is the one that she chose to take home with her. You can see the color value swap outs going on here. This is not the way she appeared underneath the light. She looked quite washed out, but they enhanced the color. They pumped it up so that that pink is pinker than it would have been. The reds are redder than they would have been. Um, the flesh tones are in some places browner than they would have been in real life. It's just exaggerating the colors and creating more value shapes going from your darkest dark to your lightest lights. And I think it gives a sense much more of a sense of form and a certain spark. The other thing that this one does is it's heavily, there's a lot of orange going on in the face and in the hair, and then throwing in the opposite, you know, complementary color of blue behind really helps make the thing pop, as well as doing that in the eyes. So that's just, that's just a smart painter, a smart colorist, I would say, in this case. Now the next is Lord Julian Fellows, who they put, as I said, with just a gray background. I do like the first painting. I like exactly how he's anchored into the bottom of the canvas. I think a lot of this might have been done with a palette knife because of how angular those shapes are. It may be wrong, but I don't think so. Um, I like that there's a lot of color in the grays and a lot of shape in that gray rather than making it a matte behind. And I think he got a likeness as well. Maybe not an exact likeness, but you you pretty pretty darn close. Close enough for me anyway and it certainly qualifies as a painting. The next one I'm going to show to you later in context, and you can get an appreciation for how tiny it is. It is a very tiny painting. Uh, the person who painted this, her name is Terry, and she is just such an excellent uh, drawer. You know, she draws beautifully and accurately, and works very, very slowly and very, very tight. So this, this is certainly a likeness to Lord Julian Fellows, um, and I like that she didn't gray the background. Like, uh, maybe it was just because she didn't get to it. I suspect it's because she didn't get to it. But I like that yellow happening behind. I think that helps make the whole thing a little bit more vibrant. As I said, it's, it, it is a very small piece, and if she had had more time, she said she would have finished it. And uh, so, so she's, just not, she's just not a fast worker, but meticulous, extremely meticulous. And here is the third one from the heat, which was done on a wood panel, which is a pretty unusual surface to work on. I didn't talk much about it, and it was very hard to see it. And this was virtually just a, you, you saw it on the screen for about one second and it disappeared. No one paid much attention to this, so I can't really say whether, I can't say much about it. I didn't get a chance to see it well enough. Uh, here's the one that Julian chose to take home with him. It's certainly painterly. You can see the brush strokes happening, and it creates a vibrant sort of thing going on. And so that's the end of that. Now the three semifinalists. Who did they choose? Let's see. Well, they picked Terry for one. So remember, there are going to be three semifinalists, and only one goes on to compete in the next program. It's a little bit confusing. In the end, from each one of these episodes, they pick one person who goes on to what they call the semifinals. The semi, so there are about seven episodes, and then in the last episode, those each person from so one person from each one of those episodes will show up, 
and they will do the same thing, pick one person from those people. It's a lot of people to contend with. But anyway, here's a contender. Here's a second contender for this particular episode. Again, this is the, was the one that Julian chose to take home with him. And a lot of color value swap outs going on here. I love it when people will make the swap out of a flesh color into a green or really any other color because you can do that as long as the value of the color is the same. You can make that swap out. And I think you can do that in painting. And that's something that you just can't do in photography that I'm aware of. So this is the another one, another one of the semi-finalists. Here's the one you can see the rips in the paper that I find disturbing, but uh, you know, party of one on that one and probably hashtag Joe is wrong, but I find it disturbing. But anyway, uh, this was the one, as you probably remember, Ronnie decided to take home with her, and it is one of the semifinalists. And now we're going to look at the three semifinalists all together so you can get a sense of the scale, because I think that's somewhat important, the size of the paintings. And you can see the artists. See how tiny that middle one is? It's just so, so tiny. It's quite precious, but, but as I said, quite tiny. So now let's see, who did they pick as the winner? And the winner is, dun, 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 dun. this is the one they chose as the winner. And this is who I would have picked as the winner. But uh, apples and oranges, art is very subjective. So there we go. So that is the that is not the winner. <laughs> that is the one I would have chosen. This is the winner. And this is the end of episode two, season two. And we'll go on to the next episode. But there's been some pretty good painting going on. So remember to keep the white tube paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mixture color. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.